Welcome back to the Lancaster district guys. We're out on another bit of exercise. I think in my last, um, my, my last exercise, I only did about 5,000 steps or something. It's not good enough. So I'm going for the 10,000 today. Now I'm gonna go up this hill. You can see behind me there, it's called Hawthorne Thwaite Fell. A bit of a mouthful. Um, it's quite a bland looking hill, I suppose. Um, but it's really close to home and it's one that I've always wanted to go up, to be honest. Um, you can see we've got quite a lot of snow left over. Probably, you know, when the snow's kind of turned into ice. Um, but it looks beautiful, and that's the main thing. Uh, even if you just look over these fields here, absolutely gorgeous. So I think it's going to be great for the photography. Got the little Canon M50, of course, and uh, some more handheld shooting. And leading on from my last video, where we were talking a little bit about tripods, um, I kind of want to chat about that a little bit more. Um, and talk about something, a bit of an epiphany really that I've had about handheld shooting and how I feel like my approach has actually been wrong. Um, and you know, I'm fairly new to like handheld shooting, which sounds mad really, because I've been doing photography for years, uh, but I, I love tripods. Um, I think I always will. Um, so this, yeah, is, is kind of new to me, but I've realized I've been doing something a little bit wrong. I'm gonna work on trying to rectify that today to the best of my ability. And uh, of course, we'll have a little bit of a chat about it. So, here's the gate up to the moorland. Let's crack on. Right, so before we start heading up the hill, which is up there, look how beautiful that is, guys, by the way. And um, before we start heading up, I want to make the most of some of these trees. If you look around this area here, it's just scattered with these beautiful, quite mature looking um, Scots pine trees, which is amazing. Obviously, when we get up the hill, or I mean, it looks like it from here, it's going to be quite bland, which is fine. You know, that's something that we'll work with. But I want to make the most of these trees whilst we're down here and whilst I can. Um, so I'm going to grab a quick shot here and hopefully you can see there that's pretty much the scene that I'm working with. So I really like these two particular Scots pine trees here and then the road that leads um, up into the mountains or you know the hills in the background. I was just thinking about this one thing that I think is wonderful about winter especially when there's been snowfall but it's the same concept with frost is how it simplifies the colours. This would look so different in the middle of summer you know the hills in the background would be green obviously the trees would still be green all these reeds i'm assuming would be a really vibrant green as well and it'd just be horrible you know it'd be a completely different scene whereas the snowfall helps to simplify the colors brings out the greens of those scots pine trees and this kind of uh, yellowy color of the reeds down here so fairly simple composition and it's definitely one that's kind of made for just a quick stop really um so F4, that's not good enough lads, F4. Lads and lasses, we're not having any, any of that. Let's go F11 and uh, shoot a speed, whatever it wants to be without clipping the highlights critically. Um, so I'm gonna get everything off the screen. The settings are dialed in there. Let's just think about the composition. That looks absolutely stunning on the back of the camera. Um, I'll tell you what guys, that looks like it's gonna be a bit of a keeper. Um, so I just want the two trees kind of in the top right hand third somewhere and the road obviously is kind of naturally coming from the bottom left hand side of the frame and this is all about those beautiful simple colours. I'm going to focus off there on those trees if I can. Yep there we go that'll do us. Auto focus. Um, and then yeah just make sure I don't overexpose the highlights. Bosh! There is your dinner. And um, yeah, don't want to expose, uh, sorry, don't want to overexpose the highlights because the sky up there is looking beautiful. Hopefully that one's come out all right. Let's crack on up this hill and uh, we'll chat a little bit more about the old handheld shooting. So another snap here. You can see this road just leads us back towards them trees. Obviously I've come a little bit further now and we've got Ward Stone off in the background, which is, I went up there about three weeks ago. It's the highest point of the forest of Boland. Um, so, lovely and simple. Let's get the old manual focus on the go. Focus peaking. Um, this is a, a simple focus. I want to be about one third of the way into the image and at F11 everything's got to be nicely 
um, or you know sharp enough acceptably sharp um, 150th of the second get that road nice and central horizon at the top or top third awesome really simple photograph but again it's the simplicity that works i think and that's what the snowfall brings simplicity in colors and i feel like it just simplifies the whole landscape as well you know it kind of detextures it in a way <laughs> if that makes sense um okay let's crack on off in the background there you can see a load of trees that's where i'm going then to just kind of start heading up that slope a little bit we'll see how far we get we are on 2000 steps we're flying again surprised by that Have a quick one here. Not a big fan of the. Uh, not a big fan of the two pipes underneath the bridge, but you know, you can't win them all. You cannot win them all. I'll tell you what, it's freezing. It is cold. Whoa. Right. So we have just started heading up the hill now, but I want to get a quick shot of this little cascade here uh, amongst this beck really just to try out the image stabilization i want to try and shoot this at maybe one sixth one eighth of a second something like that not bother too much about composition really just to test the image stabilization like i said and um i suppose see how far we can push it i've done one tenth of a second and i think it looked all right now um just quickly before we get into this i want to talk about handheld shooting so in my last video i spoke all about my tripod how i love using it even when i don't need to be using it technically um, and that's always been the case and that's because it allows me to slow down fine-tune my composition and really think about what I'm photographing a lot more in depth just fine-tune the composition basically and I love it for that now I was thinking about this yesterday and I was thinking that's fantastic and that's the truth and I think there's a lot of us out there that are the same but just because I'm shooting handheld doesn't mean I can't think about my composition a little bit more in depth and I think this has been a bit of a flaw that I've had with my approach to handheld landscape photography. Um, in that I think I have to be really quick, you know, oh yeah, that waterfall looks nice, let's quickly grab a shot, yeah, yeah, bash, done. Whereas I can still think about my composition, you know, and I think a lot of what I need to be thinking about more going forward when I'm shooting handheld is the edges of the photograph, you know, are the things protruding in. To the frame that I don't want there. Um, am I using the rule of thirds correctly? My foreground, do I want this rock down here, etc. etc. You know, whatever the scene may be. So that's what I'm gonna try and do, you know. And I think a lot of the time you, you only need to give yourself an extra 30 seconds, one minute of thinking, and just look at your whole photograph. You know, are the things that shouldn't be in that frame that are in the frame that, you know. I mean the photograph might be a lot better without something protruding in let's say like I said before so something I'm going to think about a little bit more you know allow myself a little bit more time to take photographs to think about composition even when I'm shooting handheld so let's get this shot in the bag anyway ironically I'm not even thinking about composition that much here I just want to test out the image stabilization so f11 ISO 100 and what we are here one eighth of a second focus on the waterfall lovely and simple boosh so that's proper handheld like um, that's one eighth of a second I'm gonna try let's try one fifth of a second that is slow aperture f14 again focus on the waterfall be as steady as I can one fifth of a second that one's blurry that one's blurry guys I'm not even gonna show you that right Let's carry on up this mountain, this hill, <laughs> and uh, see if there's anything else worth stopping for. So, I'm going to stop here for another quick shot. If you look off in the background there, we've got really nice shadows down here. These um, trees down here that you can see are where I was down at that beck before when we were photographing the waterfall. Really nice. Um, and then, yeah, you can hopefully just see like this kind of strip of light at the top of them hills in the background, and I just really like that. Um, again, like all the shots I've taken today, really, lovely and simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. So, manual mode. And I'm going to focus on the trees down there on the bottom right-hand side. 
uh, bottom right and third, sorry, get them in the bottom right and third. Horizon on the tops of them hills, um, in the top third line, on the top third line. ISO 100, whoa, my F22, what is going on? I'm not even in manual mode, there we go. ISO 100, F11, 150th of a second, just make sure my focus is right. So I'm gonna step forward so that that path, or the path that I'm on is not in the frame because it's taken us away from where I want the eye to be led. Um, moorland in the foreground, covering the whole of the bottom third, just this area below us. Trees in the midground, and then yeah, the background is obviously them hills off in the distance with that beautiful light, and then I definitely want the sky in because it's looking gorgeous, uh, gorgeously textured. Lovely, so I really like that. It's like a, a kind of classic Forest of Boland photograph, vast, fairly epic, and that kind of nothingness that I've been talking about so much recently. So I'm gonna go a little bit further up this way, um, see what we can find and uh, yeah let's get these steps in guys let's get these steps in look at that guys look at that that is a work of art absolutely beautiful that's like that sort of photograph isn't it that would be um, <laughs> that modern art thing sell for like 600 grand in a museum or something i mean probably not that's probably that's probably a bit of hyperbole for you there perhaps i should get that image up in my exhibition whenever that goes ahead <laughs> so i've come back down to be honest with you you can see behind me there that hopefully you can see that is hawthorne thwaite fell so i got about a quarter of the way up looked at my watch and i'd hit 5,000 steps so simple maths <laughs> uh, it was going to take me 5,000 steps to get back down there where I started um, this this exercise and yeah I don't want to go over 10,000 steps because then you know it's, I might as well just be going out on big hikes then um, and that's not what this is about is it so I've decided to come back down reluctantly because it looked class up there but I'm nearly back at these Scots pine trees now so no promises but I'd like to think I can maybe get one more photograph so we'll get down there now and have a little look Undeniable. <laughs> I always say this, I think some scenes in landscape, or oh, as a landscape photographer, I'm sure you'll all agree, are just undeniable. I don't even know how I didn't notice this on the way up, but we've got this little beck here that's kind of meandering round. Scott's pine trees off in the background. We've got this little hut over there as well, uh, around about there, which is pretty cool. And the sky's really nice. We're probably about half an hour before the sunset. And yeah, it's lovely. It's got this kind of orange glow. Now, in my last video, I did a manual exposure bracket um which i just wanted to try now i want to do a handheld panel which again is another thing that i wanted to try um you know i think this is cool these are things that i'd usually be doing with a tripod uh, religiously <laughs> i wouldn't do a panel handheld uh, but yeah just wanted to try it i want to see how it stitch stitches together in post processing so um nice simple left to right it's going to be about four shots i'm going to start around here somewhere maybe just get the edge of this fell here and then pan across and just make sure that i get this bit of um this bit of the river here the beck and then a little bit on the right hand side maybe this kind of th this little bank here but i think it's going to be nice and definitely a really cool little test so i've pretty much just got my settings already dialed in uh, i'm going to manually focus use the focus peaking i think it's basically going to be like focusing to infinity and then let's start here so histograms at the very far right hand side and i'm just using the electronic level i'm going to try and keep keep that on green all the way across this isn't going to be perfect um but i guess that's kind of the whole point i want to see how it turns out so first shot beast right nice and still uh, then i'm going to pan across overlap a little bit histogram still looking perfect so settings are one fortieth of a second f7.1 um, and iso 100 third shot get that electronic level nice and steady in the middle so settings are all uh, settings are the same all the way across focus is the same all the way across beast so that should be up on your screen now hopefully it comes out all right um i have no idea <laughs> but like i say 
uh, like I said, I'll be interested to see that. So, let's get the old camera up here. Um, I'm going home. I've had enough. <laughs> no, um, it's been a good little trip out, good little bit of exercise. Hopefully some nice snaps. Um, I, I love experimenting with things like this. Um, you know, again, I'm just trying to make a positive out of this situation. These are, I'd never be experimenting with handheld panels and handheld exposure bracket and stuff. It's cool. Um, so, I also wanted to give a quick thank you to all my channel members. Um, it's something that I've never really spoken about. It's just a feature on YouTube where you can join my YouTube channel as a member. Um, and I've offered you some like perks and you uh, give me money. <laughs> I don't know how to say that without sounding cynical. Um, again, it's just another way for you to support me. I'm, I'll tell you what, I, I, I really appreciate anybody that just watches my videos, even if they don't like and comment. So, you know, in its simplest form, I appreciate that. So I'm not trying to push it. I'm not trying to ask anybody to do it. Um, but I'm going to put up on the screen all the people that have decided to join as members. Thank you so much for your support. It really is massively appreciated, especially during these times. Um, it means the world. So thanks a lot. If you want to check those perks out, I'll put them in the video description below. Um, but you guys already know, there's always a way for you to support me if you want to. I don't want to be pushy about it. And like I said, if you don't support me monetarily, I don't care. I appreciate the support that I get from you guys. With thumbs up, you could give this video a thumbs up as well, that'd be great. And comments below, and like I say, by just watching my videos. Anyway, cracking little um, bit of exercise. Still loving the Canon M50. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next exercise. Out. Mm -hmm.